let's model a 6.5 shortboard based on the measurement sheet on the right. We'll be using AccuShaper's latest features to get smooth curves and get dimensional accuracy. So let's start from a new template. The 6.0 shortboard should be just fine. To start off, there is a few things I like to do. The first one is to go to the slices and use our center slice as the reference. We delete all the other slices. They will just be distracting for now. Next step is to rescale the board to our dimensions. So it's a 6.5 short board. We have 21 and a half width. And our thickness is two and a half. All right, we are using straight line measurements in this case. From here, I like to start modeling the bottom. So the bottom rocker, here we see our rocker line. We can see that our nose rocker is four and five eighths, while in our measurements it is five and a quarter. So let's start by moving this point up. We can just enter the number five and a quarter. All right, we move their point up. We will be doing the same with our tail rocker. So our tail rocker is two and a half. All right. For the top, we can already adjust our numbers as well. So the thickness of our board at the nose is a quarter of an inch. So that should be five and a half total and our tail thickness is half an inch so we'll end up at three inch let's go in here three so there's a first step in setting the nose in the tail rocker from here on we'll be adding some guide points to guide us through the, the remaining measurements so we have our one foot off of the tail which has a one inch rocker then we have our center line which is three and two and a half and there our rocker will be zero then we have our one foot of the nose which is five five and we have a one and a half rocker So these are our measurements. Let's close it. We can see that some markers have been added. I like to create my rocker with just a single curve segment. So what we can do is remove this blue point. Now our rocker is completely screwed, but we've added those guide points. If we now just check the fit to guide points checkbox, bam, our rocker perfectly fits our measurements. Now, if you have more measurements, it will find the smoothest curves as close as you can to those points. But this is a very smooth rocker line and we created exactly to the dimensions that we want. Now we can do the same thing for our top rocker. So here we have to edit our thicknesses. This is a little bit more inconvenient because we'll have to do the maths ourselves. We'll have to add the rocker values and the thickness values to get our guide points. So here, when we're at the one foot off mark, we can see that we have one and three quarters uh, thickness and one rocker. So this results in two and three quarters. All right. In our center, which is at three and um, two and a half inches, we have zero rocker and two and a half thickness. So we just add two and a half, all right. And then our one foot off mark at five feet, five inches. So the rocker of one and a half and a thickness of one and three quarters gives us a total of three inches and a quarter. So let's close this. Let's look at our numbers here. And actually what happened because our fit to guide points feature is still enabled, it actually fitted our top curve exactly through those three points. Again, I like to get a smoother curve with just a single segment. So let's close this. Now, the if the rocker doesn't, or the line doesn't automatically fit, we just have to disable and re-enable the fitting. 
and now we have a single curve segment going exactly through all our guide points. And you can see these curves are super smooth because they just consist of a single segment. So if you now go and take a look in the bay, well, we can see a rocker curve, which is, which is pretty smooth. All right, so we're happy with our rocker line. Now the next thing to do is to model the outline. So let's go to the outline tab. And we'll do the same thing again. Let's disable fit to guide point just for a second. It doesn't really matter, but it'll show you how, how the curve will be fitting. So in our guide points, we can start adding all of the guide points. Uh, so in the tail, zero, um, we'll have to half uh, our width because we set our guide points in absolute coordinates. So in this case, uh, it is three and a half inches width or half the width in the in the tail one foot off we see we have 15 and three quarters so that it is seven and seven eighths in the center at three and two and a half we have 21 inches which is Ten and a half. Then the one foot off mark is five feet five inches. We have fourteen and a quarter, which is seven and one eighth. And then let's do our well our nose point as well. Six. It doesn't it doesn't really matter, but it's nice to have it there as a validation. And this is a width of half an inch, so let's do a quarter. When we close this, we can here already see that something is wrong. And I actually made a mistake, so this is a good check. I said it's 6'6", six, six, but our board is 6'5". So it changes to 5. And now we can see, yeah, our guide point is at the right spot. We can see here our tail point, 3.5. Well, this is exactly where we want it. Our nose point, uh, let's zoom in a bit grab it our nose point is at a quarter that's also where we want it so that's perfect but you can see the curve is not exactly fitting to our points now we can just enable fit to guide points and this will work somehow now what you can see is that our curve is not as smooth as we'd like it and this is because in in a single segment if you only have one point to fit through there is multiple ways to bend this curve to fit through it. So again, like we did on the rocker, I like to just remove this point, unless we have, of course, more measurements. But in this case, we have only three measurements along our outline. So it's best to just fit a single segment to it. So it's fitted, and this board looks a lot nicer. We have a very smooth curve through all the points that we have in our measurement sheet. If we now go to the bay, we can already see that our board looks really really smooth if you if you look down it all the curves flow nicely now what we can see is in the tail we still have our slice exactly like we have in the center of course this is not what we want we don't have a hard edge so we still want to model this that's where we're gonna set some slices now all right let's go to the slices tab something to remember with the slices is that our slices are interpolated smoothly in between them so setting too many slices can create kinks in all your curves so what i like to do starting from the center slice so let's select it first we model the slice how we like it how we like it to look so i'm pretty happy with this one you can start tweaking it any way you like but you kind of nail the the center slice in the way where you, you like it then we can add a new slice in the tail but i like to add it really really close to the tail so let's do like say two inches from the tail you can experiment with this, whatever works best for you. So zoom in on the slice and we want to create a hard edge here. Now the best way to do this is to collapse this red point on the blue point so we get a, an angle here. And then we just start dragging this blue point out until we have an edge that we're happy with. Let's also start dragging this top point down. I'm using the arrow keys here. And we can zoom in a bit more.
this looks like a nice edge here if we now go to the bay we can already see that we created a hard edge here our red line our tuck line is also evolving smooth towards the nose all right so when we look at our side view we can see our edge is flowing nicely we can now start adding V, adding concaves, all these kind of things. But something you should really watch out for as well is how your apex line flows from nose to tail. So if you go into expanded view, you get a much better view of the curvatures of all your curves. And you can see here that there is a slight kink uh, when this apex, the blue line, which is like the thickest part of your board, is actually kinking a little bit here. Now, the reason is we've been dragging our apex line down in our slice. So we can move this one up a little bit. So now it's it's nice and smooth, but we move the rail up. So we can move this rail down back again. And we go to slices and we add a new slice. And let's do it at six feet and let's say three inches against two inches from the nose. There we go. If we now go to our rocker view, we can actually start pulling up this line a little bit until we get a smooth curve. Now our apex line is a lot more smooth here. If we go to the bay, you'll see an apex line without kinks. So that's a blue line when looking down the board. All right. In that same side view, we can do things like adding a little V by pulling it up here. Here we have some concave because the point is lower than the center stringer. This is our tuck line. And we can also manipulate the curve in the front a little bit. Go back from expanded view. We go to our bay. You see we added, we added some curvature here. We can check in our slices what we just did. And by moving this down a little, we create the real V. Now looking at these colors, we can see how our contours evolve over the board. Looking at the curves of our board, there's a few things we can change. I think we can pull the tuck line a little bit in more in the nose area. So when going to the outline, you can see our tuck line is coming from this hard edge, moving inwards to the center slice and moving back out to the edge. So we can easily go in our outline and move our tuck line a little bit in from this slice. If we now zoom back out again, we can see our curve. Our tuck line is now staying further away from our apex, which gives us a little bit of a better entry of the water Let's go to the slices and check what we just did because we actually modified the slice. Now we can see our shape is a little bit off and we can start modifying everything a little bit. It looks a bit more how we like it. Check again. Very nice continuous curves. So yeah, thanks for watching. Go and check out version 2.6. The coloring you get here with the contours, the apex line, the tuck line, how you can modify them, how you can see the expanded view on, on our profile, or how you can even expand the outline to look at all your curvatures and get a better impression on how they flow. Hope you like it. Check it out.